friends and welcome back to our homestead. A couple of days ago we went hiking with the family up the mountains and I wanted to look for whatever is out there right now as far as herbs or mushrooms and I was happy to find some Usnia old men's beard and we harvested a little pile and I made homemade remedy antibiotic but I also found this guy. Look at it. Isn't this pretty? Look how beautiful this mushroom is. This is birch polypore. And it's called polypore because when you flip it upside down on the white part, all of this is tiny little pores. Uh, pores. Poly means many, many, many pores. And this grows on fallen birch trees. And that's exactly where I found it was um, probably broken by a storm or something. It was a huge birch tree down and this guy was nice and fresh sticking out of it. Look, look how nice. So I just broke it off just like this. I brought it home. I cleaned off a little bit, make sure there was not, nothing on it, but I didn't wash it because washing will absorb more moisture. And guess what I'm gonna do with it? I'm gonna make a medicine with it, homemade medicine. Okay, so quick disclaimer, as I always say, for a, this should be educational. So enjoy it as an education. But if you guys need any medical advice, I always uh, suggest seeking professional advice from professional um, uh, place. But this is just for your education. And that's exactly what I'm, I'm intended to do. But I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do for my, for my use for my family. So I'm gonna make a tincture out of it. And I'm gonna do a double extraction tincture. Why? Because it has water soluble properties and alcohol soluble properties. So sometimes people go ahead and they buy supplements and capsules from, uh, from different mushrooms and they take them for health benefits, hoping that it's going to do the, the job. Unfortunately, very often mushrooms such as this even mushroom are not exactly digestible by humans, okay? And because they have this polysaccharides, this long chain starches, and some of them are not broken down by human digestive system at all. So we don't get those benefits. So they need to be extracted through water and through alcohol. So it's gonna be a double extraction. But first I need to actually do something with it. I did a little bit of research about this uh, birch polypore and they call it the Swiss knife of mushrooms. Why? Because it has so many different uses. You can cut off a piece and use it as a band-aid because it's very pliable and it absorbs. And you can use it as a band-aid if you, something happened out on the field, you know, uh, you know, in the, in the wilderness. <clears throat> also, you can cut a piece and use it to sharpen a knife. You can sharpen a knife with that. Uh, dry can be used as kindling. You can start a fire with this. So it has so many other uses. But I'm going to be making it into a home remedy to address some of the things and I health things. So I wrote them down so I don't forget. Because birch polypore um, is anti-inflammatory. It's an immune system tonic. It's antiseptic to treat wounds or clean wounds. It's antifungal, uh, it's antiviral, anti-tumor, it also anti-parasite. So guys, have you heard of that story of um, uh, um, Atsi, I think it's called Atsi, the, the Iceman that was found in 1990 something, 1992, 1995, something like that, I can't remember, in the Alps, in, uh, um, hikers found this body that was so well preserved that they thought they found a recently uh, deceased uh, hiker. Um, but when they started investigating, they actually found out that that person was actually from 5,000 years ago. And guess what he had in his bag? This, this mushroom. And um, when they did further examination, they found that he had parasites, in uh, intestinal parasites, and this is for intestinal parasites as well. So it has many, many uses. All right, so uh, let's get going. All right, so here is this mushroom, and I'm just going to cut out the part where it was literally against the bark because I don't need that, okay? But the rest of it is nice and beautiful. It has a beautiful tan 
cover, but when you flip it upside down, it has a nice and white under undercoat. And it's very, very porous. It's soft when I press on it, so I know it's fresh. And it has a very nice foresty mushroom aroma. Very, very nice. So what I need to do with this. Okay. So I need to do double extraction. Unfortunately, every single um, every single recipe I looked is talking about using for, uh, dried mushrooms. So I'm just cut it in half and I'm looking inside and it's also full of those uh, polypores that looks just like here, they're inside as well. There are different methods of doing it because some people like to do the alcohol extraction first and then they will follow with water extraction using the same mushroom material. Other people will divide in half. One will go for um, alcohol extraction, the other half will go for water extraction, and then they will combine them. Some people do a third method where they will do a water extraction first and then they will do alcohol extraction. So there are many methods of doing it and I feel like everyone has their preference and it's okay. But I found that every single herbalist that talked about using mushrooms, they talked about dehydrating them first. This is a still, oh, it smells so awesome. This is a still fresh mushroom and it's filled with water, with fluid, because that's what they do, they absorb it. So first things first, I need to first dehydrate it. So I'm gonna be using my dehydrated that I use to dehydrate my herbs and other things. And you guys can use that as well. I've seen some people even cut them up in thin little pieces, thin little slices, put them on a cooking sheet and they will dehydrate it on their windshield in the car on the hot day. Hey, whatever works, right? But I'm literally going to cut this up into small little pieces and put it into my dehydrator on a low setting. So all I need to do is just cut it in thin slices because if I do them in thick slices, it will be difficult to dry them. So I'm going to be doing thin slices. And then after that, I will cut them up in little pieces again. Just like this. Okay. So the little, little slivers like this are going to go into my, um, my dehydrator. Okay, so back to the perch polypore. And so what happened, remember guys, I cut it all up and I put it in the dehydrating tray into my dehydrator. And I dehydrated this for 16 hours. I checked at hour 12 and it was still slightly not dry. So I wanted them to be completely dry and crisp. And now it's to the next step. The next step will be I need to weigh it and I need, to, because I wanna know how much I have and I'm going to polarize it in the coffee grinder or the or a spice grinder. You may use food processor or blender. All, what's important is to break it down even more. It doesn't have to be powder powder, but it has to be broken down more because we want more surface area to draw out those medicinal properties from this mushroom. Okay, and I will be weighing it because I'm not gonna be using that folk method that I usually use. This time I wanna weigh it, I wanna measure it, so I have a consistent result of my homemade remedies. All right, so let's get the scale here. I'm gonna zero it, I wanna see how much I have. All right, so I'm gonna do first in grams, and I have 45 grams, 45 grams. In ounces, I have one point 1.6 ounces, okay? So 1.6 ounces I have, or 45 grams. Okay, that's important for me to know. All right, good. The next step is I'm gonna put into my coffee grinder and just kinda like attempt to break them up a little bit, okay? And it's gonna be noisy, so I'm gonna turn off the, the sound in a bit. Ooh, little dusty. All right, that's the last of it. All right, so it's not, exactly powder but it's definitely broken out in much smaller pieces okay all right so the first is going to be the water extraction and i waited remember i told you there's five grams and i'm going to do method of one one to five one to five ratio that means i'm going to be using one part of dry mushroom to five parts of liquid all right so i'm going to now cover everything with water and i measured out the water 
it's important that you know using non-chlorinated clean water so either filtered water or something like that but it has to be clean water all right so and now I'm gonna cook it and I'm gonna show you my method of cooking because I have done it um, different ways and before and I found that it doesn't matter what I did it always evaporated it always evaporated and I lost some liquid so this time um, this is my method don't laugh at me when you see it all right so I want to use only glass I didn't want to use plastic I didn't have anything else so I'm gonna take this um, glass bowl and I'm gonna cover with another very tightly okay so I still have plenty of space all right and I'm gonna put it in my crock pot just like this I'm gonna put it in the crock pot and now where's my water and now I'm gonna take just water and I'm gonna pour hopefully it's spilling and I'm going to pour into the crock pot I'm gonna put a cover on and I'm gonna put it on low all right, so I'm hoping that with this method, it will not evaporate as much. I'm going to put this on low heat and I'm going to cook this on low heat, just like this on completely covered for 24 hours on low and slow. As a matter of fact, at one point, once it comes to like hot, I'm going to turn it down to warm because I have setting hot, low, high or warm. And I'm going to keep it on warm actually. All right. So. There is a kind of disagreement, almost a difference in opinion between the herbalists about what sequence of, of events should be when you're doing a double extraction and what temperature to extra extract it in. So some herbalists believe that we need to do alcohol extraction first and then followed by water extraction. Other herbalists believe that you do water extraction first followed by alcohol extraction. So it's like two different schools of thought. Some herbalists believe that when you do water extraction method, that the temperatures have to be super, super low, super low, never above 160 Fahrenheit or 70 something on Celsius. I can't do the math right now in my head, but low, never boiling. Other herbalists, especially the experts in mushrooms will say, it doesn't matter what temperature it is. It can be as high as you want it to be. So because there's so many opinions out there about it, I'm going to do it my way. So first step ext extraction is going to be water extraction on low temperatures for 24 hours. And then guess what, my friends, tomorrow, right around this time, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do as far as the alcohol extraction. So let me go plug this in. Okay, so 24 hours in a crock pot for dual extraction and a lot of water has evaporated, but because I did that water bath method where I poured water around my dish and then I did a tight seal on the dish itself, a lot of water evaporated, a lot. And I was quite surprised because I put like over an inch and now it's like barely in the bottom left. And even though I kept it, um, as soon as I brought it to like hot temperature, I brought it down to warm and I kept it in warm, a lot evaporated. But because like I said, it was covered in um, dual method, liquid is still here. So I'm going to strain it and measure it. So a question came up on my other video that I did Usnia double extraction. And somebody asked me, why couldn't I just use 100 proof vodka, which is 50 of water, 50 of alcohol, and just call it a day. But see, here's the thing. Normally, that's what I do with my fresh material plants that I use, uh, herbs that I use for tincture. But because that particular um, double extraction needed heat, to be applied for for decoction that's why i had to do with water separate and then strong alcohol such as everclear because it has 190 proof and which is about 95 percent of alcohol okay and that's why i ended up doing it because it required heat extraction same thing with the mushroom because it's requiring decoction done by heat i needed to use water separate and then strong alcohol separate, and then we're gonna combine them later, okay? So let me guys show you what I'm gonna do next. So turn this off to let it cool for a little bit. I'm just gonna take this out of my crock pot and look how little water is left here. 
not much at all. So majority of it did evaporate. Okay, so I don't need this anymore. And the next thing I have to do is I need to actually strain this out because remember this was a dehydrated mushroom. A lot of it got absorbed back into it and the uh, um, decoction turned its color to a nice yellowish tan color. So now I need to strain it. And the reason I'm going to strain it into a measuring cup, because I want to see how much of liquid I have remaining in here, because that's how much alcohol I'm going to be adding to it. So I'm just going to take a measurement um, cup like this. Some put some sort of a, a vessel to hold it like that. And I'm going to put my my some sort of a cloth, either um, muslin cloth or cheesecloth folded in many, many, many times. And I'm just going to strain everything and I'm going to squeeze it out. All right, I'm going to strain everything. I need to grab a pair of gloves because I, I'm going to uh, squeeze it as well. And I don't want to introduce any bacteria to it. I want to keep it as clean as possible, even though my hands were just washed in hot water. All right, so... Let me see how much we already have here. Not much at all. So if you guys remember, not much at all. So I'm going to squeeze more out of it. When you guys remember when I did it, when I mixed it first with hot water, I did one to five ratio, meaning in grams or in uh, ounces, whatever you guys want to do. But I did it in grams. Um, it was one part in grams, and this was 45 grams of mushroom. And I put 225 milliliters of water, okay? All right, gloves are on. Okay, so now I can actually attempt to squeeze more liquid out of these mushrooms that I chopped it all up. And they, it's almost turning into like mush type of consistency, okay? Let me see how much more of liquid I have here. Now this, you can use a French press if you want to. Oh yeah, a whole lot more, a whole lot more. All right. So maybe it did not evaporate as much as I thought originally, because yes, over time, because the extraction was done over 24 hours, lots of liquid evaporates. Okay, so let's see here. We've got, hey, where's my ML side? We got it. I'm back to 220, 225 to 25. Perfect. All right. So now I'm going to put, so now I have a quart jar, which is one liter jar, canning jar. And I'm going to return this mushroom back in there because now we're going to do alcohol extraction. Okay. So go in there. I don't want to make a mess. Maybe I should do this. Because I don't want to make a mess. Okay. I'm going to return all of that mushroom mass back into my jar. Because now this is going to be the final extraction. Okay. It's going to be the final extraction. All goes in there. I'm going to return back the fluid that we got from water extraction and I'm going to be measuring the same amount of alcohol okay same amount of alcohol so you will be one to one of alcohol or approximately I should say of alcohol and and decoction that we get from water extraction All right, almost there, 225. There you go. And I'm gonna be adding it all here. Okay, so now, now we need to put a cover on it. And normally I like to cover my, my tinctures with plastic, plastic cover, but unfortunately I did not have any more plastic covers left. So I'm going to, I only have a metal one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take a piece of, of parchment paper, non-bleached parchment paper, and I'm going to put that, put that on and make a tight seal. Okay. Okay. So the labels 
the labels are on. Okay, so now this jar, I'm going to shake every day like this, a couple of times a day for the first week, at least the first week. But then after that, I'm going to keep, keep storing it in my dark pantry closet away from the heat source. And then I'm going to shake it once or twice a week until it's ready. And it's going to be ready for straining in about six to eight weeks, but at least a month. Okay. So I usually do about six to eight weeks. And then at the end of the, that period of time, I will again put it through a cheesecloth. I will squeeze it all out and I'm going to store it in a dark amber bottle, just like this, just like my other tinctures. Okay. And they usually have a label when I made it and it has a dropper because tinctures are being used in drops. Okay. So friends, I hope you are not overwhelmed by this dual extraction because it's quite easy it's just two steps to it right and you need to measure and weigh it but it's you know it's not difficult we we can do this okay we've uh, we've used mushrooms and other herbs for thousands and thousands of years as a humanity so we know how to do this all right so again this is going to be a great remedy for parasites antibacterial antiviral anti-inflammatory immune boosting tincture that's going to be ready by probably first or second week's week of december all right friends so i hope you are encouraged and i hope you're learning how to make a dual extraction tincture so friends be encouraged and try something new hi little leo say hi to everybody yes you want to make a tincture with me you want to make a tincture with me oh it's okay it's okay you don't have to you don't you can just watch you can just watch where are you going, buddy? Oh, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Oh, there she comes your mama. Oh, you're my precious boy. 